Welcome to Dead Center Disc Golf. Today we're headed out to a private course called K-Town, built by Kevin Townsend in 2013 on his 10-acre property. This is a par 56, 5,736 foot course. Please plan ahead and call Kevin. This is his private property and he does not charge for people to play. 15 minutes is not planning ahead. Get the number off of Udisc and do the common courtesy thing. Give Kevin enough time and be respectful of his place. Stick around for an alt basket on number 8 after the 18th flyover. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. Please share out the channel and show some love to Kevin for opening up this beautiful course for people to play. Let's get to it. Basket 1, par 3, 425 feet off the tee pad, which are pavers. You have a decision to make. You can go left of this tree here in the middle or to the right. If you go out to the left, you have more space, but also more distance to get back to the basket here by this tree with still green foliage. If you take the right hand side, you do have to push through this small gap here with some trees to the right and left. Get back in the shade. There are more trees left and right. You do cross over some tee pads on this course, so be careful if you're throwing. Make sure no one's on the tee in front of you. Basket number two, par three, 445 feet. You're going back into the open down the hill. There's that tree that we saw off the first tee. Stick to the right. You have plenty of space. This is tucked back in by this shed and next to these storage boxes here on the right. There's a fence line to the left, some trees to the left, but this green is pretty accessible. You have a nice little backstop hill. It kind of leaks down to the right, so stay a little bit left. You should be okay. See T-pad for three right there. Pretty straightforward shot here for basket number two. Basket number three, par three, 410 feet. You can lay up before this tall grass. You can try to push, go over it. Most of the time you're going over, trying to land in this space here. And you have a little bit ways to go to get to the, the basket over here on the tree, land, tree line on your right. 410 feet par three. Basket four, par three, 161 feet. It's tight off the tee. Backhand turnover on the left-hand side, hoping to float one back a little bit to the right to the basket. If you have a flick, it stays pretty straight and at the end fades to the right. Also a good play there on basket number four. Basket number five's tee pad is to the left. All right, there's two options here for basket number five, 340 feet. The drone is going to go probably the safer route as far as getting through the trees. A big turnover shot that you really want to Anheuser flex and get all the way down here. Some forehands just to get out here into this open, but really Anheuser flex shot really shapes out the fairway. The best to approach this green up on this shelf here. Basket six, 99 feet par three downhill. Initial gap off the tee is really tight. And uh, there's a couple trees right in the middle of the tee pad. You can pick the right side, but the left side is more of a straight shot. You have a little creek down here at the bottom, small green. Just gotta miss the trees. Basket number seven, par three, 242 feet. That plays much farther. You have tight off the tee. You want to stay over to the right-hand side. You have a little bit more open space to access this basket that is on top of a picnic table. Pretty straight shot. Just got to get out. Basket eight, par four, 611 feet. There are two options here. If it's wet, you want to go to the right option. We'll... We'll circle back to this one after all 18 are covered. But this one's going to show you the normal play. You want to stay out right over here because trying to go up the left-hand side, you do have a tree line. If you stay to the right, you have this nice little opening 
to get back to the green, maybe with a flick forehand or backhand turnover if you're a right-handed thrower. Green's tucked in the back here. Basket 9, par 3, 172 feet. Tee pad is up the hill from basket 8. You can go left or right of this red barn looking shed, but either way, you need an overstable disc to fade fast and stick for your birdie on basket number 9. Basket number 10, par 3, 368 feet. You are in the open, but there's a surprise. Relatively easy shot to get up here to the green, but look out, you are at an extremely elevated basket up here on this pole. Good luck. Basket 11, par 3, back into the woods for 315 feet. There's a couple different options. You could go left, that's the most open route. You could go right, that's a little trickier. Straight shot is the trickiest, but it's the easiest entry point for the green that is heavily guarded with a lot of trees right up next to the basket inside circle one with a fence as a backstop. Basket 12, par 3, 306 feet. You're coming back out towards the opening. Do have a lot of trees here. Just try to find a lane and get your shot up against this shed here for basket 12. Basket 13, par 3, 199 feet. This is a spectator hole. Opportunity to ace run this one out in the open. Nothing really to worry about. Give it your best run. Not much else to say about this one. Pretty straightforward. Basket number 14, par 3, 302 feet couple different options this route is probably the most well taken it is open here through this gap and you come back to the left for the mound you can go over the fence and over the trees a little bit to the left off the tee basket 15 par 3 304 feet back down the hill really this is the shot uh, talk to kevin a little bit about this one you can try to sneak it over on the left hand side but he said ideally you put it up high on hyzer, go up over this roof because the green is going to be tucked up to the left here in between this, this roof and the basketball court. Basket 16, par 3, 319 feet. You might recognize that tree on the left-hand side there. That's off the tee of 1 and 2. This one's pretty straight, but picks up speed as it goes downhill if you overcook it and don't have the right touch or angle you could end up well past the basket just because this hill does kind of pull you back down into the green tree line in the back if you do go long it could be a tricky putt but if you have the right touch nice easy birdie for you Basket 17, par 3, 206 feet. This one is fun. Uh, a forehand seems like the right play here, but this back row of trees is really tight on the turn, and if you push it too far, you're going to end up not being able to access it. You're going to be over here to the right. Backhand turnover is a nice play. has the right angle. Basket 18, the second par 4, 511 feet. We're heading back to one's tee pad. There's that tree that's out in the middle. Kevin does a nice job of utilizing the land that he has. 18 is open. There is a little fence down here before you access the green that's right next to the house. This is also one people tend to practice putting on. So watch out for that as well. Here's alternate for hole eight. Par four, 611. It's about the same distance, actually. It's just a little bit farther right, as we'll see. Again, the reason for using this alternate basket on most days, if it's rainy, the, the main basket will be a little waterlogged. So you want to stay farther right up on this hill, and you're going to come circling back a little bit dog leg left here, back down the hill to see the basket 
another par four. You can kind of see the little entry to the other basket to the left-hand side there. And that's K-Town. Again, private course, no charge. Just make sure you get a hold of Kevin before you head out well in advance. There's a lot of plans to have an Airbnb rental, make it a weekend with your friends, go out and play. Kevin's a super nice dude, uh, got an awesome piece of property. Be respectful of the grounds, take care of it, pick up your trash. Uh, again, this is kind of a passion project for Kevin and a really fun course that I got to chance to come do a flyover for. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please like and share. This is Dead Center Disc Golf.